Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Green Effect podcast. We are episode 23, and Dave Jaworski is back on for part two of my interview with him. This time around, we are going to talk about a little bit more about Uptown Waterloo and if the construction will ever end. Um, what about the government of Ontario reducing their subsidy for permits for youth sports and the use of the facilities? Let's find out if he uh, has an opinion on uh, kids going to the mall instead of going to the gym. Uh, regional council review it's going on it's happening are we going to see uh levels of government reduced and finally pot shops are we going to see one in waterloo somewhere soon besides your 7-eleven here we go with mayor dave from waterloo welcome to the green effect podcast finance life business and everything in between and now your host Stephen green okay so on the topic of property taxes and, and money and all that mm-hmm. stuff so um one thing you may not know is uh i'm a club director with a local volleyball club ignite volleyball oh, club wonderful yeah just started up i took a year off from coaching volleyball and what do i do i start up a new club because that's what happens when you volunteer you get bored yes. if you take time off right yeah, exactly so the one thing that i'm hearing um we were talking about uh, user fees okay? right yeah so the one thing i'm hearing and i know um i believe both the school boards are meeting this week to figure things out there's always been, and I might be wrong, I believe it was a Trillium grant whereby um, there was a grant there where not, not-for-profits, non, non-profits mm-hmm, would mm-hmm. get subsidized uh, gym usage. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about uh, the usage of gyms. I, I'm not sure about soccer fields and hockey, and, and I know hockey is a different beast altogether. Okay. So um, what, what's your thought? Because I know, I know, for example, there's fees for Rim Park or manual life or whatever it's called yeah, yeah, yeah. we all know it as rim right yeah, yeah. sky dome and you know acc <laughs> we, 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 you get older you don't change the name um so there's user fees for rim um there's different user fees that way what is the thought or the plan when clubs have to raise fees significantly to, yeah. to balance things out to pay yeah. for these gyms what are your thoughts on what's going to happen with these kids who maybe can't afford it now yeah. um do we do well what will the city of waterloo reduce fees for rim will I don't know what's going to happen when kids are now going to start hanging out in the malls because they can't afford their gym space. Well, I actually just had a conversation about this before I biked over here with some uh, uh, experts in the field. And uh, really, so going back to uh, property taxes and user fees being the only two things that can help run the city, which actually pay for about half and half. City of Waterloo budgets about $150 million. Half is property taxes, about half is user fees. And so what we do is we run... We, we do what the free market doesn't because it doesn't make money, right? So a good example is uh, the user fees for things like sports are generally at about 50 cents on the dollar. Mm-hmm. So 50 cents is picked up by the club or hockey or, or whatever group, and the other 50 cents is picked up by you and I as uh, citizens of the community building our quality of life. And uh, we recently did a customer satisfaction survey and scored 99% in a large-scale survey, very good or good quality of life in Waterloo. So... We're on the right track. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you say is is true. And so we offer subsidy programs for people who can't afford to get into uh, sports programs, whether it be some expensive ones like hockey or some inexpensive ones like soccer. We do subsidize those. And uh, uh, like I said, right out of the gate, we're giving, uh, not giving away by any means, but it's 50 cents a dollar. It's just that much, expen- that much expense to build the facility, run the facility, electricity, um, you and I know it's mm-hmm. it's it's gone out of uh, through the roof. And uh, what we've done is we put in LED lighting at Rim Park and at City Hall to help uh, decrease those costs. We're saving about five hundred thousand dollars a year there, saving about four hundred thousand dollars a year on the LED street lights, which all municipalities did in Waterloo Region. And so we can look to things like that to you know reduce the the ever increasing costs. But that uh, certainly is a challenge because we want kids to be out uh, off of their screen time. Mm -hmm. So uh, a good example, we mentioned I was biking. My next event is at Elizabeth Ziegler Public School working with the grade fives because to, and what I'll do with them, I always ask them questions. So who plays, who plays a sport, right? 
okay, what sport do you play? Hockey. Where can you play hockey in Waterloo? And they name all the places. And then we talk about looking after the facilities. And next thing you know, you know, you're hearing about all the kids who are playing all these different sports and you realize, or sometimes it's gymnastics, which, you know, is just a club sport. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, you know, just getting the kids involved and building a... Um, a comfort with athletics that will do them well. That's that's our aspect of healthcare. Mm-hmm. The province, you know, half half their budget goes to healthcare. Well, by us promoting quality of life, uh, active lifestyle, mayor bikes to to the yep. school, mayor bikes here. Uh, you know, I'm not a small guy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so showing that, so showing that uh, you know if 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 the mayor can do it and he's uh, you know turning 55 this month, well maybe I can bike to work or bike with my kids on the weekend or build that sort of. Um, capacity play volleyball play pickleball um, play you know lots of things you can do road hockey you know just things to get out and active and get off that screen time now what happens though if we've got kids who are just excluded from activities and again I know this is a provincial thing yeah. so um, I know there's alternatives but what if that alternative becomes I'm gonna go hang out in the mall and and maybe be more on my screen like is yeah. there <coughs> what what are your thoughts on this? How how do we is is there any is there any solution to clubs not increasing fees? Do we, can we get Rim Park for cheaper? And I'm not suggesting I'm looking for a discount here for yeah. night volleyball, but you know is there is there anything the city of Waterloo um, can do or you know lobby the government? Or I don't know something like that. Well, I think the the challenge is if we look um, uh, at upper levels of government, they're mm-hmm. saying it's uh, it's time for a bit of austerity now. So there's the the time is is um, you know that that sort of that's a challenge for them now. And for us, you know, our challenge is always you know trying to keep my tax increase at inflation, and so balancing that out with the the user fees, right? So user fees again about fifty cents on the dollar, and the rest are picked up by here. So. Could you move it all over there? Sure. Would uh, would any of the listeners or the watchers today want a five percent tax increase? Probably not. Yep. <laughs> and so it's a it, it's it's a small matter. Something's got to give, but, I guess. Right. But, That's well, there tough. are good programs yeah. like uh, Canadian Tire has some good programs in terms of uh, helping subsidize. Um, you know, one of the, the things I'm proud of is you know, prosper, as prosperous community, good projects don't go unfunded here. Well articulated, good projects don't go unfunded here. A prime example would be Hospice Waterloo Region, uh, building here over here at Rim Park, and it's going to be the first uh, and first only hospice in uh, in Waterloo. And uh, you know what, w- you know, just warms your heart to say that you know people came through. They were looking to raise ten million dollars, and they did it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that that's a large chunk of change. And people said, you know what, yeah, that's something that we need. That's a need in our community that's not being met. And um, so I'm not saying this can apply to everything because there's over yeah. there's about 2,000 registered charities just in Waterloo Region, right, from churches to sports groups. And uh, there are lots of needs in our community. So I can't deny that, but I can certainly try and do whatever I can to promote it myself. And uh, we always have an open door at City Hall and uh, like the school boards and that, you know, trying to figure out how we can make better uses of, of those gyms, those schoolyards. We already partner with them on baseball uh, in particular. Uh, using their schoolyard, so how we can do more of that. Yeah, and they're awesome. I mean, they, they've got such a tough job, too. So it's uh, mm-hmm. really super friendly, all things considered, too, because I'm sure they're pulled in 18 different directions. Yes. So yeah. it's, uh, well, you know, they've the, been really good. The principals of our of our local schools are really the drivers of a lot of after-school opportunities. You know, I really can't thank them enough for them getting involved. And, uh, you know, I can think of like a Halloween party that we have here at, I think it's at St. Luke's, and uh, there it is on a Saturday night, and the doors are open at the school, and it's really thanks to the principals and the custodial staff that they say, you know what, this is important for the community that I really feel a part of, yeah. and uh, they come through. Very good. All right, Uptown Waterloo. Uh, yeah. uh, I love it up there. It's fantastic. Um, there's always construction. Yes. And, and I think you, you, you touched on this earlier when you said, you know, and I, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but the people today have inherited what the people previously have, have bought, right? So... Um, there's just more construction. What are, are you worried about that? I had um, I had uh, Tracy. Um, thank Kelsby. Thank you. Yeah, you pronounce yeah. it much better than I do. And uh, you know, we were talking about a little bit about that. When when will that? Um, do you think it'll ever stop? Do you think it'll? When will these business owners not 
have to worry about it anymore. I feel so bad for them. Yeah, well, the the, the good news is, um, so uh, Uptown Waterloo, some of the mm-hmm. things that we're pulling out of there, as you know, from the Corduroy Road, that's 150 years old. <laughs> right. um, there's some old Random stuff Random things, eh? <laughs> well, a, a good, uh, another great example is down by Bower Lofts. There was a pipe down there that we decided to replace because the LRT was going on top of it. We didn't have to, but we, well, of course, wanted to. And you don't know why. Mm-hmm. It was wood. We had still had wood pipes over 100 years old. We had extended their life by, I think, adding a coating of concrete on the inside of them, and it was still in great shape. So um, some of our things last that long. Other ones, like you'll see, we had a uh, pipe break uh, just this morning in an area where, you know, probably only about 50 years old. And so we have to deal with that infrastructure. So yeah. what we decided to do is um, we're not just going to do the underground infrastructure, which takes like 90% of the time or more, we're actually going to do a full streetscape and make it beautiful, take 10% more time, 10% more um, effort. And so what we, it had to be done. Mm-hmm. So the construction there, it had to be done anyways. And so we took the opportunity to go literally from wall to wall, um, from the uh, edge of the sidewalk to the edge of the sidewalk, and take that entire right-of-way out and rebuild it. So we've rescaped it with 16-foot wide sidewalks. We've put in bike lanes. Um, we've, uh, we'll protect those because that's what the, the citizens want. We you know little bollards along the way. Because when you're parking there, you can't really feel, if you, did I hit the curb, am I up on the bike lane? You can't really tell. And so we're going to fix that. We put in the, the trees with the, the, uh, the new lighting system that uh, uh, we've recently had. Uh, in Raptors colors, when uh, Main Life had Perfect. Red Day, we really lit up red for to support that cause, and uh, we're just building that vibrant lifestyle up down. So, what uh, the good news is this this year, uh, my understanding is the construction period is ahead of schedule, despite the rain. That last time the rain was just horrendous, and it fills yeah. the pit. And you can't do anything with it. So um, we'll we'll get through it, and we continue to see uh, a vibrant Waterloo. Um, uh, you know, uh, some people say so many stores closed, and we look, looked at a graph of you know store closures over the years, and it was actually no different, even during the construction period. So, mm-hmm. um, I do really feel for the uh, the, the vendors, the uh, restaurants there, and we try and do whatever we can to to help them through it and to promote it, particularly through the BIA. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, very proud of the city of Waterloo still has free parking uptown, Absolutely. two three hours free, <laughs> uh, almost I think eighteen hundred spots. Free on weekends, free after five every day. So that means if you came at 3.05 uh, on uh, any given day, you're not going to get a ticket because you'll stay the proper amount of time, enjoy yourself, and, uh, you know, and uh, that's important. Eventually, people will be taking LRT up there. So That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, pot shops. Yes. Are we going to see them in Waterloo? I, I, I saw an interview with you. I think it was on CTV. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I think you're a supporter of it. Yeah. Uh, tell tell well, me more about, are we going to see it? Uh, maybe sport, I've taken that out of context. Sporters. You had a big smile on your face when you were talking about it. We'll leave it at that. Mm. <laughs> well, a little known story is I don't think I've actually seen pot since high school, so I'm not exactly <laughs> up on it. But, um, you know, it was a, a it was a take it or leave it deal from the province, right? And so if you opted out, um, either way you're going to have mail order um, uh, marijuana coming to your door. The yeah. Ontario pot shop i don't know what it's called <laughs> yeah, whatever is, is doing quite well uh you know they're they're they've got everything in order you haven't heard any complaints from there i actually do believe that the uh the infrastructure behind it is actually from local shopify shopify plus which is an uptown waterloo the, the infrastructure so we're helping out on that and people are getting the, it mail order or whatever um so at the end of the day you know the the gum, provincial government says if you want some of that revenue to offset what's going on for policing and bylaw costs and that uh, you have to opt in. And if you don't opt in now, then you may not be able to get any of that money. And um, what they came through with is uh, saying that there was only going to be 25 or 50 stores to start with across Ontario. And so they really constrained the market. We really wish that they had given us more um, a say. They took away the say. We we're going to license certain areas. They said, no, you can't do that. So that was very unfortunate. Um, and they did say it was only going to be um, 100 meters from what I would call vulnerable occupancies, like a school, a public school, which, as you know, probably isn't very far. No, um, I mean, you have two universities and a college. And <laughs> I'm thinking my public schools and high schools, right? You know, yeah. um, you know, you look at where my urban schools are, like a uh, like a Saint, Saint David's or uh, SJAM and that. They have lots of retail around them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I long story short, um, it was the, the best that we could come up with. 
We um, authorized our staff to use, a, I think, a, about a 15-point plan to give feedback whenever one wants to locate here to, um, to say why we, why we don't want it there. Will it be listened to? I don't know. Have we, do we have one yet? Not yet. But, um, you know, we try and make the best of uh, upper level of government decisions. At, at the municipal level, that's the best thing about the municipal level is that, you know, everything that's out your window, I can do something about. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to your satisfaction, yeah. <laughs> but at least I have some control over it, right? You know, um, yeah. and it, it's very, you know, rewarding that way that you can take action, but only to the point of uh, what the laws allow. And what you can control, right? Absolutely. What you can and can't control, absolutely. So, okay, so right now there's a regional council review going on. Right. Uh, Ken Sealing is the chairperson. How's it going? What do you see happening? Give me your predictions. Hmm. That's a good question. So um, uh, it came out of the gate, uh, a bit of a surprise to all of us. Uh, regional review for your listeners is going to look at about, I think about the eight regions that are in Ontario where they have, we have two tier government and it affects about 80 municipalities of the 440 in, uh, in Ontario. Um, ironically, my brother lives in a place in Northern Ontario where if you got 31 votes, um, you became a councillor and because you only had 170 voters up there. Like that's how tiny the, the, the place is. They're not fixing that, but they're looking at the one big place. <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, so we had our 30-minute uh, session right out of the gate with uh, Ken Sealing and Michael Fenn, the two people who are going to be doing the report on uh, regional reform to the minister. And uh, after that, then we had sort of some community consultations at the regional level. We let people come in to talk to us. Uh, Michael and Ken were in town. They had uh, laid it open for anybody who wanted to come in and, and give their thoughts. And uh, also at the, the city level, we uh, looked at the, uh, the lay of the land and said, is, the real question is, does two-tier government work here? Or is something significant, or something broken? And the reality is, um, no, I don't think anything's broken. I'm relatively new to it. I have 25 years of business experience. And I think what most people get uh, confused by is the word efficiency. When I talk to the taxpayer, when I knock on doors, um, you know what, they, they didn't say that, you know what, we need to get rid of two-tier governance. We need a new governance model. Nobody said that. What they said is keep taxes low. And that's what we've been doing at the regional level, which looks after uh, the provincially regulated things like public health, uh, fresh water, wastewater, think of Walkerton, mm -hmm. and uh, then things that move, Grand River Transit, police, because criminals, you know, you're chasing them around, and uh, paramedics have to go to the hospitals and go from Wellesley to the hospital, and we look after all the other stuff that makes your quality of life, things in your neighborhoods, and that's, um, that's how we've divided things up. And then at the lower tier level, we cooperate. So we recently had an agreement with the uh, for automatic aid, fire aid for the townships because we have we have some fire halls in Waterloo that are kind of close to the townships at night, mm -hmm. and so we came up with a uh, an agreement that said, you know what, we're both going to get the calls at night so that our our firefighters who are there at the the hall ready to go, they can go out there, and if they can make it, there's a couple of vulnerable occupancies in in Wilmot Township, and if we can make it there first, all the better because it would just it would destroy my heart if yeah. anything was to happen there knowing that we had firefighters and you had the resources for those vulnerable occupancies and that's just for, for future reference mm -hmm. and we work a lot with of course city of kitchener on various projects because of commonalities our libraries work together and so we're already saving money um to give you a counter example of efficiency so um let, let's say we're going to have the uh common library system and we're all going to have the same features, just the same features. So today you can order a uh, place a hold on a book, and it will come from the main library out to the Harper Library on the on the west side, and it'll be delivered. In the future, that same service might be to order a book from the Harper Library and have it delivered to Air, or one in Cambridge and have it delivered to Wellesley. And then you're going to have to hire staff to move that book around in order just to keep the same level of service. Because what most people don't realize, Waterloo Region is the same size as all the cities of Toronto, plus Brampton, plus Mississauga, plus Oakville. We are enormous. You look at us on a map, mm -hmm. we blop, fall right on top of those, obliterate them. That's how big we are. And so we actually have a huge geography that we cover, and we solve it well through uh, the, the governance model that we have today. A handful of elected officials and... Um, you know, in the case of uh, the township councillors, like their 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 pay is very modest, mm -hmm. and they're doing the work often seven days a week. Not not 
eight hours a day by any means, but seven days a week helping their constituents, it's it's good governance. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think it's. Uh, listen, I'm a Toronto boy, born and raised there, and I remember what happened when uh, all that went down. Mm-hmm. And everything got put together, and it was just—I mean, it was—it was a tough move. So it's not fixed to this day. Oh, I know. <laughs> and then you have things like a councillor will have a community council. Well, what's up with that? Like you know, yeah. we already have regional council and city councils. Yeah. Now you're going to have like, would you have big city council and then unelected? I don't know. Yeah, I no, it's it's, it's it's like one of those things where it's like, well, I still have my group of friends, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's almost, you know, I still say I'm from Scarborough. Oh, I'm yeah. a Scarborough boy, yeah. right? So yeah. Yeah, I'm proud to say it, too. Not a lot of people are, well, but... Th- that's a great example where uh, Waterloo Region is the same distance of driving from Scarborough to the far, to the uh, Mississauga. Yeah. That's how big a place it is. That's that's big. Yeah, yeah. And bigger isn't better. Um, what we're looking for is, you know, the, the, the small town feel with big city amenities. And you can know that we are a powerhouse, not only in Ontario but in Canada and in the world where people know the brand of Waterloo. And what, the brand of Waterloo really represents um, all, all urban environments and the townships and that because when we're doing development, if a business opens in Kitchener and people live in Wellesley, that's good for Waterloo, Cambridge, it's good for all of us, okay. right? So it really doesn't matter. And we don't fight like that. We grow the pie, not our slice of pie. So yeah, and I think that's key. important. I think if, if, if that's shown to that committee... That everyone kind of play nice in the sandbox. Oh, I think I think that's important, right? And we do. It's yeah. uh, it's also um, what I not we, we use the term uh, in high tech co- competition, where you mm-hmm. cooperate but compete, and you can see that's us happening um, with uh, we had development charges removed because uh, back 15 years ago our downtown didn't look so nice, mm-hmm. like uptown Waterloo did not look so nice, and so what we had to do is uh, incent people to what was now the barrel yards. Everybody loves the barrel yards. City of Kitchener then followed suit and did the same thing. Look at Kitchener now. Look at uh, Cambridge and what they're getting with the new hip development there, the Gaslight District. Mm-hmm. And that's all through this friendly competition where we're actually building each other up, not tearing each other down. We're, we're growing up and we're coming beautiful cities onto our own with many different urban environments, different urban environments yeah. that... Um, I think we all prize uptown Waterloo, downtown uh, Kitchener, and we still love Hespler Village or Preston Village or yeah. downtown, or downtown Galt. Galt. Yeah, that's you know, become a great place. You, you know, right? you look at the the bridges of Galt and that that you know they were they were always building with limestone down there. We always built with wood up here. Our wood is gone. Their limestone stands. They're a great <laughs> place. Beautiful city. Very good. Okay, so one question that came from uh, Brian Santos, uh, president of the uh, Kitchener Waterloo Association of Realtors, mm-hmm. um, he said. If you could picture yourself as a realtor, how would you pitch your city? Oh, you know, it, it, this is a city that is firing on all cylinders. There is no doubt about it that, you know, if you want to have top talent, this is the place to be. Um, with the University of Waterloo pushing out, you know, prime, Canada's largest engineering school and one of its newest is Waterloo. Um, all co-op, all have experience. Uh, mathematics, computer science, and all the other disciplines at Waterloo, but then move over to uh, Laurier, the business school, and all the social sector, the science that they have going on there, and then um, at, uh, at Conestoga College, Canada's newest culinary school is on University Avenue in Waterloo. Oh, is it really? Beautiful. Uh, it used we, to be George Brown. That was the big one. But oh, yeah. this is the, the newest one. It is growing, has tons of international students. All these three places have tons of international students. We're becoming a very international city by bringing people here. And that's really what we want to do as elected officials. All of us are on the path of ensuring of uh, diversity, equity, and having people keep their cultures so that... Um, uh, I always use the example, if we're going to discover it here at our universities, then we want to be entrepreneurs, which as you know, we're very good at, and then we want to sell to the world. What better way to sell to the world if we have all the cultures here in Waterloo Region, having kept them generation after generation, so that we can sell to Sri Lanka, so we can sell to China, so we can sell to the the hugely developing uh, continent of Africa, all these different opportunities, if we have this all here in a city that is, um, or a municipality that's covering 600,000, you know, we can really have it, we can really have it all here. And yeah. uh, it's just so exciting where we're having, yeah, pick pick another city and compare us to us and just in your own mind, I won't mention any, but pick yeah. it <laughs> and you'll say, you know what, this this is the place to live, yeah. our community of Waterloo Region as a whole. And you can still sell your house in Toronto 
sell one, buy two. You can still do that here too. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll, I'll leave it to the realtor experts on that <laughs> Sorry, one. Exactly. Okay, so um, one last question for you. Now, this is being recorded and it's on video. So just yeah. remember that. We're going to date this a little bit, but uh, Raptors are up 3-2. Yes. Okay. What is your prediction? Who's going to win? How's it going to finish? Well, um, is Game 7 back in Toronto? Do you know? Game 7, Sunday in Toronto. Yeah, but know. but now, okay, but you just said yeah. something there. Are you assuming we're going to 7? No, no. That would be so sweet, though, to win at home. That would be <laughs> so exciting. But, uh, you know, I'd prefer for us to uh, to take it down as soon as possible. Last night, they're on such a roll. Water, Uptown Waterloo, we had 2,500 people watching it on our blow-up screen TV. Awesome. Uptown Square was packed. People were having fun. And, uh, well, up until the last few seconds, we were having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, no, I... I, I think the the Raptors are, are due. Um, they 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 are just like the city. They're firing on all cylinders. Uh, feel sorry for Kevin Durant uh, that unfortunate uh, new injury, but um, you know the the team the team's doing well. Stay focused and uh, you know take it in Game Six. That'd be really nice. And let Kawhi take the last shot. Well, yeah. I mean, love Kyle Lowry, no doubt. But really, where's our boy? Where's our boy Kawhi? Anyway. Well, when he came out in the uh, second half, was that uh, last game and that? He came out and got those two three-pointers, I think, right off. That really set the stage. And so that, that kind of thing, I think, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, sometimes uh, three points really sounds really good, but sometimes two points will win the day. Uh, as you know, last night with some free yeah. throws there, different game. That's it. That's it. So... Dave, thank you very much for coming Wonderful. on. It was great to have you. And uh, listen, you're welcome anytime. We'll probably have you on again. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to have you on again for sure because we got to find out what happens with the Raptors game now to see if your prediction was correct or not. Absolutely. Right? So we'll have to have you on for that. But yeah, thanks for coming. It was great having you. Wonderful. Thank you for doing this. You know, It really helps build our community. Each and every little thing that we do day by day helps build our community little by little. And that's uh, really what we're about here. Now, if anyone wants to reach you, um, go, they go to the website. Oh, right. They can Mayor just reach out to you. comes to both uh, myself and uh, Nicole, who helps run. Yeah, the, Nicole was great. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, setting it up, and, uh, and that's the thing. Right? You know, the office of the mayor in Waterloo is the two of us, right? You know, and then yeah. the people help the constituents and the councillors and that. But that's really that small town feel that we really have, and you'll. You, know, you get a response from one of the two of us, right? So yeah. it's, uh, That's that. what happened. I got a very quick one from yeah. Nicole. She's great. So yeah. make sure. I hope she's listening. So when it comes time for you know, review time, she'll know. <laughs> so. <laughs> I've got it on record, yeah. Nicole. He likes you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much. I appreciate Wonderful. it. Wonderful. Thank you. There you go. Mayor Dave from the city of Waterloo. What a great time we had. Super nice guy. Great information. Totally casual. Uh, really easy conversation to have. So thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget to follow us Facebook and Twitter, RBC Stephen Green. And uh, next up, we've got the mayor from the city of Kitchener, Barry Verbanovic. So make sure you listen to the next two episodes. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Green Effect Podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Google Play so you catch the next episode. And don't forget to leave a review. Much appreciated.